Hi everyone, and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass Geometry Common Core Regents. So we're doing this one question at a time. Here's question 19. Diameter ROQ of circle O. So let's start drawing this out. Extends through Q to point P. And tangent PA is drawn. If RA is equal to 100 degrees, arc RA, what is angle P? So this one is going to take a couple of steps. So the first thing we're going to want to notice is that since this is diameter, this really cuts the circle in half, right? Which is half of 360 degrees, 180 degrees. So we're given that this is 100 degrees, but we need this other side in order to figure out what angle P is. So knowing that a semicircle is equal to 180 degrees, we can see that this is gonna be 80 degrees. So now to find angle P, so we're going to use a formula to find an angle that is connected to a secant and a tangent. So the formula goes something like this. So we have angle P, which we don't know yet, and we're setting this equal to half of the big arc, RA, minus the little arc, QA. And now we just are going to plug in our information. So we have RA is 100 minus QA, which is 80. 100 minus 80 will just be 20 and half of that is going to be equal to 10. So there, so the choice one, the answer is 10 degrees. So there are a lot of different angles and arc measures to remember uh, formulas and how to find them. I have a cheat sheet though, so please check that out. I also have several videos on circle theorems that also review this kind of a thing. So please check those out. On to the next question. Segment JM has endpoints J, negative 5, 1, and m, 7, negative i. An equation of the perpendicular bisector of j, m is. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is find the slope, because so, they're looking for an equation, right? So we're going to need to find the slope. So to do that, we always just find the change in y over the change in x, or the rise over the run. So we have I always like to line them up like this so we can easily see what's y2 and what's y1. So we have negative 9 minus 1 all over 7 minus negative 5, which will be plus 5. So this ends up being negative 10 over 12, and you can reduce this to negative 5 over 6. So because this is going to be a perpendicular bisector, it's going to be a perpendicular line to Jm. So whenever we have perpendicular, what we end up doing with the slope is we take with the slope is we take negative reciprocal of the slope of the original equation. So all that means is you're going to flip and negate the slope. So we have m equals negative 5 over 6 for the original segment, but now we're going to flip and negate it. So it's going to become 6 over 5. If you look at our answer choices, we see 6 over 5 for two of them. So already we can, and five over six here, so we already we can eliminate choices one and two, because we know that the slope is going to be six over five. So the next part of this though, because we need to find more information about this. So the next part of this is, is kind of tricky. So the perpendicular bisector means that it's going to cut the line segment JM in half. So knowing that, that means we're going to find the midpoint of JM. So the midpoint is super easy to find though. It's just gonna be the average of these two coordinates. So we'll have seven plus negative five over two, and then one plus negative nine over two. So this is just taking the x, the x coordinates and dividing by two and then the y coordinates and dividing it by two. So once we do that, this will just give us two over two and negative eight over two which simplifies to one comma negative four. So how do we put all this information together? So now we have all the information we need to make our perpendicular bisector equation. 
we have the slope m which is equal to 6 over 5 which we got by taking the negative reciprocal of the slope of the other segment the original segment jm and now we have this coordinate point which is the midpoint because it's a perpendicular bisector of jm by just taking the average of the two coordinates so now we need to convert this into point slope form so um, so just a refresher on what point slope form looks like, it looks something like this. So we have y minus y1 equals m times x minus 1. So here we have our coordinates that we'll be plugging in from here. And then here is just our slope. So now we just need to plug in our information. So we have y minus y1, which in this case would be minus 4. So two negatives will make a positive. So y plus 4 is equal to the slope 6 over 5 times x minus 1. So that's our answer, which we can see is choice 4. Okay, on to the next question. Question 21. Quadra, quadrilateral ABCF and AD are drawn such that ABCD is a parallelogram. So I'm just going to highlight the parallelogram. So it's ABCD. EB is congruent to FB. So this is, so knowing that we know this is an isosceles triangle and that these angles are going to be congruent as well. It also tells us that EF is perpendicular to FH. So we also know that between E and F and F and H, there's a right angle here. So now they give us some angles. If angle E is 62 degrees, angle C is 51 degrees, what is angle FHB? And we want to find FHB, which is right here. So let's just mark what they want. I'll put a question mark here. Okay, so we could start filling this in. Um, there's a lot of different directions to start going, but let's start with the isosceles triangle. So they told us that EB is congruent to FB, so we have an isosceles triangle, but they also gave us this angle value, and we can actually just plug this angle value right over here. This is also going to be 62 degrees. And knowing that, we can find the angle value over here because all angles within a triangle add up to 180 degrees. We have 62 plus 62 is 124. 180 minus 124 is going to be 56. So we have 56 degrees in here. So now let's move on to um, this right angle they gave us. So this is 62 degrees. So to find out this angle, over here, we're just going to do 90 minus 62, which is 28. So this is 28 degrees over here. Okay, so now we're going to use our parallelogram information. Remember, ABCD is a parallelogram that's highlighted in purple. So the thing about parallelograms is that opposite angles are congruent. So if this is 51 degrees, this is going to be 51 degrees as well. Another thing about parallelograms is that the interior angles always add up to 360 degrees. So knowing that, we can do 360 minus 51 plus 51. Let's see what we get. Plus 51. And so we get 102, so 360 minus 102. So this is equal to 258. So that means that these two angles on either side, angle B and angle D, are going to add up to 258. But um, they're going to be equal to each other, right? Because opposite angles are congruent in a parallelogram. So we're going to divide 258 divided by 2, which gives us 129. So that means this is 129, and then this entire thing is 129. So knowing that this entire thing is 129 and that this little area is 56, just this angle, we can subtract 56 from 129 to get 73. And then if you take this, notice 
focus on this triangle in the center we have an angle that's 73 degrees an angle that's 20 degrees and then the angle we're trying to find so to find that we're just going to add 73 plus 28 and we get 101 and then subtract 101 from 180 this will give us 79 degrees which is our answer which is choice one so just to recap how we got a lot of this information um, down here this was based on isosceles triangle and then the parallelogram there were a bunch of rules to remember about that so we knew that opposite angles are congruent and that's our answer so if you're looking for more on this test check out the playlist in the link below and thanks for stopping by happy calculating Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating!